Hi guys, I'm here in the kitchen, gonna make some boba today. Gonna make some milk tea with boba. So let's dive in. Okay, first question I suppose is what kind of boba are you gonna get? Um, I can't really tell you, there's a lot of choices. It's pretty inexpensive stuff, so I would just go to the store and really buy every single one they have and try them all. Um, these five minute guys, these five minute guys, I actually like five minute boba, these five minute guys haven't worked that well for me. So they work, I mean, they're okay, but they're not ideal, maybe. Um, this one actually is my favorite. The, okay, I apologize for my total lack of pronunciation, but the uh, Ho Tran Chow, uh, I like. The five minute boba. It also comes in the rainbow variety, which I love. I love the rainbow because it's fun. And also, these guys, when you cook them, they're sort of clear on the outside and you can kind of see through them and then the, the center is the color part. So it's, it's really an interesting little creation. Um, but they're a little bit chewier and not quite as soft as, as these uh, monochromatic boba. So I guess I'm gonna, you know, I would suggest these probably. Um, you'll find various other ones that, you know, so there are a bunch of these five minute bobas and then there's some that are like, you know, 20 whatever minute and then there's the overnight stuff. I have not had good luck with the longer ones. The longer it cooks, I'm not, I haven't experienced it tasting better, but it gets, it generates a lot of film, slag, it's a, it's a huge project, it's a mess. These things are quick and easy. Five minutes really an hour, but um, so, so try them all is really what I would say, but this is the one that's currently my, my favorite. Okay. So um, you're gonna use like maybe six to 10 parts water to one part boba. So actually what I have over here is some boba that's, as I've, I've been cooking it, it's just about ready to go. And then over here, I'm just gonna fake it so you can see the steps. So I'm gonna use eight to one. I'm gonna use uh, half a gallon of water, eight cups. Throw in a little salt to make it boil faster. That was kind of a lot actually, but you get the drift. See if you can actually move your crazy burner. Look, flame. Cover that till it boils. And then here I got my one cup of boba. Okay, so dot, dot, dot. Let's pretend it's boiling. Oh, it's hot. Let me get a, okay. So now I'm gonna throw my boba in this Throw my boba in, a cup of boba in this boiling water, yay. Okay, um, so one, the, the way I think that they sort of suggest is that you let it come, return to a boil and then in pretty quick order they will plump uh, and then cook for five minutes. So what I do is I just return to a boil and then I start my timer and I cook it for 10 minutes, which is actually more than five, but that seems to be better. And then after it's, cooked it's boiled you know you you're uh, you don't want it to boil over so you you don't want it to boil over you don't want it to stick so you keep moving as it's cooking and then when it's done you could serve it after your five ten minutes of cooking but it's sort of better to let it simmer so you could turn it to very low heat I just turn the heat off so my, my cooking's done I'm just gonna turn the heat off that seems to work well enough for me save a little electricity or gas uh, and cover so they kind of say, you know, simmer for, for 10 or 15 minutes. I'm just going to do 20. Uh, seems to be best. Okay, so now I've got this cooked. It cooked pretty fast there, didn't it? You're impressed, huh? Um, I've got this cooked boy that I'm just going to let simmer for 20 minutes. So I, I put eight cups of water, one cup of boba uh, in boiling water. I let it return to a boil. I cooked it for 10 minutes. Now it's going to simmer for 20. Okay, meanwhile, I'm going to make my boba sauce if you will, uh, a little kind of a syrupy thing that I'm going to um, put the boba in right until we use it. Over here is my milk tea ingredients, which is, you can obviously use whatever you want, but what I tend to use is two parts tea, one part milk. Um, what kind of tea? Well, anything you want, really. You could use, you know, a black tea. I've got this, uh, this vanilla tea that I like a lot, or you could do a chai mate kind of thing. I've got from a place called Chado, these two teas 
uh, Mate Carnival and Brendan's chai. I like to mix half and half and kind of make a, a chai mate. Um, one thing, when I make tea normally, it's, I, I do six teaspoons for a quart, a quart, six teaspoons, or 24 for a, a full gallon. For, for, for chai, mate, milk tea, I use eight. I feel like that just kind of wants to be a little more kick, a little stronger tea, so I would use eight teaspoons. Um, if it's black tea, I would use a level teaspoon. There, there we go. If it's black tea, I would use it level. If it's herbal, etc., I, I would do heaping. Okay, so I've put those together. I made my tea. Oh, so what if you want to sweet? What kind of? If do you want to sweeten it? And what about milk? Good questions. Okay, so sweeteners we have. Well, you could have your tea unsweetened if you like. But if you want it sweetened, we have the usual suspects. We've got your fabulous CNH pure cane sugar from Hawaii, um, Splenda, Stevia. I really love these guys because Splenda and Stevia often come powdered and ridiculously concentrated. I find that hard to work with. These guys um, are cup for cup equal to sugar. So you can, you can even mix and match if you want to do part sugar, part whatever. Um, and then for your milk, I mean, you could use whole milk. You could use soy milk. A lot of people obviously have issues with whole milk. Um, you know what I really love? Oh, here, let me get this out too. I love this almond milk, which I think tastes, maybe tastes better than soy. And actually, so here's the numbers, it's pretty crazy. Um, this is a pretty hedonistic tea, but you actually can make it a little less crazy. Here's the numbers. So a quart, right? A quart, one of these guys, one of these guys. A, a quart of tea, if you use whole milk and sugar, it's gonna be 370 calories, 12 grams of fat, six grams of saturated fat, etc. If you replace that with almond milk and let's say Splenda, then instead of 370 calories, that quart's gonna be 120. Instead of 12 grams of fat, it's gonna be only three. Instead of six grams of saturated, it's gonna be none. Instead of 47 milligrams of cholesterol, it's gonna be zero. Uh, the milk does give you some protein, so you get five grams there, one with the almond. Uh, no fiber in the milk, a tiny bit in the almond. And the almond actually has a little bit more sodium. They're both pretty crazy on the sodium. Um, so the almond tea is really, I, I like the taste and you can actually make this, you know, it's, it's still not exactly vitamin water, but it's, you, you've really come a long way. Um, that's not counting the boba, that's just the milk tea. Uh, I put this plus 70. What I kind of like to do is maybe for a quarter of my sweetener, it seems to work with this boba, etc. thing, is to grab some maple syrup and throw. So I use, um, I use a third of a cup of sugar or these sugar equivalents per quart. Or so if it's a gallon, then it would be one and a third cups. Um, for some people, that's a in crazy, insane amount of sugar, but actually, like the, the Lipton Sweet Tea ladies in their video, they talked about using one and a half to two and a half cups in a gallon. So um, I actually, believe it or not, I'm actually low by some measure. So obviously, you know, whether you want a little or tons is, is totally up to you. But um, for, for this tea, I might take a quarter of whatever I'm going to do and replace the sugar Splenda, et cetera, with maple syrup, kind of a nice way to go. Okay, so um, that's, my, that's my milk tea, sweetened if I want, um, uh, milk if I want or whatever I prefer, mix it up, ready to go, yay. And now I'm gonna make this stuff. So I'm just gonna take um, honey, warm water, brown sugar, honey, warm water, brown sugar, yay. Uh, obviously whatever kind of honey you want. For your brown sugar, you can get those little cardboard boxes. I have not had good luck with them. They tend to get hard on me. So I love this stuff. It's a little more expensive, but it's really awesome. Um, it's half Splenda, half brown sugar, and a little bit of glycerin. So it tastes fantastic, uh, but it cuts your calories in half. And the glycerin means that it's just, you know, it's just always soft and moist and really, you know, nice to work with. So I, I recommend it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna take some brown sugar, kaboom, some honey, yum. Meanwhile, my boba, I, I was stirring fairly constantly when it was cooking for those 10 minutes, 
but now that it's um, you know doing the simmer thing you really don't have to pay too much attention to it so a third you know however much you want to make but a third brown sugar a third honey a third warm water and grab yourself a spoon and stir it up Okay. If you use the decent honey, it's really fun. It's really fun to smell this stuff. It's you know the warm water, the honey. It's just it's mmm. Smells pretty good. Okay. So my boba has been simmering for 20 minutes, and I'm now ready to drain it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can do a one-handed drain. I'll we'll see what happens here. Oh, I guess I have to do this. Um, I'm not gonna rinse it. I find that even though I'm gonna, in this case, you know, be doing iced tea, not hot, um, the longer you keep the boba warm, the softer and chewier and yummier it all, sorry about this crazy camera here, but I can't hold the lid on with one hand. Uh, it seems better uh, if, if you don't rinse it, and, and I don't really think it's particularly necessary. Okay, this would be Frosty Lens. That was nice. Okay, can you see? Sorta. That wasn't so swift, huh? Okay, don't, <laughs> note to self. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me grab that boba and throw that in there. And now I'm just gonna leave this in here until I'm ready to use it. So if I'm gonna drink some in a minute, I'll go ahead and run with it. But if I'm gonna drink some in 10 minutes or an hour or two hours, I'll go with it. The generic number that, so two things. One, the generic number that I've heard is that you, you shouldn't serve boba more than six hours after you make it. Um, it gets, you know, way less soft and way less yummy. You can kind of reheat it with hot water if you need to. Um, but you know, kind of like a lot of bakey type things, um, it's really great like right away, like even an hour. It's, it's already, you know, it's fine, but it's not as quite as incredible. So um, get your glass, whatever you want. I can't recommend these um, double wall borosilicate glass glasses enough. They really keep hot, hot, cold, cold. You can use just, you know, any old slotted spoon you got laying around, or if you come across one of these guys for 99 cents at the same Asian market that you bought your boba at, it's ideal. Grab yourself some boba, however much seems appropriate. Again, if you leave it in the honey mix a little bit longer, maybe even better, but uh, fresh is really great. Add that milk tea or, you know, whatever you want instead of milk tea, obviously. And... There we are. Enjoy! Uh, I need another hand or two, but anyway. Let's see. Okay, boba. You, <laughs> yummy beverage. Mmm, fantastic. Okay, happy boba.